I'm pretty tired, so I thought this would be a really good day to work on the sewing machine. We're gonna actually be sewing up our mushrooms, some thread painting. If you are really super into organizing, then you're gonna love this part of the video. Okay, y'all, that was a battle. My machine was putting up a fight. I just wanted to give you a little update now that I've taken a break and I am no longer really frustrated with my machine. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Sunday Stitches. My name is Lauren Weber. I am the artist and quilter behind Garden Girl Studio. So today we are going to be having a very chill day because I am absolutely wiped out from Valentine's Day. I helped my husband at Edible Arrangements uh, during the holiday and my fingers are incredibly sore. They are actually blistered um, from making so many arrangements. So I cannot hand embroider today. I'm not gonna be doing any handwork today. I'm actually gonna be working on my sewing machine. I'm pretty tired, so I thought this would be a really good day to work on the sewing machine, let my hands rest for, for a few days. We're gonna actually be sewing up our mushrooms and I'm gonna be adding some thread painting to both of these mushrooms and the backgrounds and I think consensus was that we wanted to add some flower dots so I might be doing that as well so I'm probably gonna throw on some music while we work so grab whatever projects you want to work on today and join me I have a cup of tea from my favorite local cafe super official the tea is delicious so it's um, bringing me comfort uh, because I'm so sore and tired and I probably won't be quite as chatty today I'll try but I am just so tired from Valentine's Day so uh, the first thing I need to do though is because I'm thread painting get my threads ready you can see up above me here I have a thread rack okay so you see this thread rack here I it's what I use for my thread painting these are embroidery threads so I am going to restock my threads I had to take some away to go work on another project so now I need to put them all back on the pegboard so if you are really super into organizing then you're gonna love this part of the video basically I organize all of my threads by color so I'm gonna recreate the gradient here and I'll give you a nice close-up of what that's gonna look like if you like to keep your threads pretty and color organized kind of like I do and then we'll pull some colors that we're gonna use to reinforce our fusible applique and to add a little bit of dimension to our projects. And we'll get started. So I've pulled a few colors for each of my mushrooms. On this one, we pulled a darker blue because I do want to pull out some of these richer tones. And I even pulled a few sea foamy kind of colors because the background that we're going to be using has sea foam in it. So I want to try to pull that toward the center of this project. 
And then over here, we have our other mushroom. I have darker eggplant. I have a deeper purple, but I, I don't think I wanna use it. I think I actually wanna pull out some of these violet colors. You can see some of the violet in here. And then for in between, I wanted to go more like peachy sorbet sort of tones for our in-between spots. So we're gonna see how this pans out. I may change my mind on this one, but I, I don't think so. I think I wanna pull out some of the violet colors and this seemed like the best option. So these are our colors so far. We're gonna go ahead and start our thread painting. Okay, so I'm getting ready to start sewing. I'm getting my machine all set up. I've got it oiled. I have a test patch ready so we can test our tension. I did find, and there's not a ton left, but I think it's gonna be enough for this project, this Madeira rayon thread. That is the perfect color for the darker portions of this mushroom. Yeah, that is the violet I am looking for. I think it fits a little bit better. This one's a little bit closer to wine, whereas I want the violet. Yeah, love that. So we're gonna be using this as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my machine set up. We're gonna do a test patch and then we'll start stitching. I have two purposes for what I'm doing. One is to make sure that our fusible applique stays held in place. Even though we used a permanent fusible web, I didn't do like a super job like anchoring it down. I just kind of did a speedy quick cut when we were working on this. And the other thing is to give it a little bit more dimension, a little bit more character, and to add a few like highlights, low lights, shadows, um, kind of as we're working through. So I'm just gonna kind of be working through each color. And as we go, generally I work light to dark. So Keep that in mind. You're gonna see me running a little test patch to make sure the machine is working. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so I'm about to get started stitching, but you can see here, I did a lot of testing. I wound up changing over to an embroidery size 75 needle. I had a top stitch and usually my top stitch is good to go, but I was getting a lot of skip stitches and I wanted to kind of practice and get a good feel for this machine. Most days when I'm quilting or sewing, I'm working on a long arm machine, which is a very different experience. With a long arm machine, my machine moves and the fabric stays stationary. And in this case, I've gotta be moving my fabric through this machine where free motion stitching, so my feed dogs are down. It's not going to be just manually running through. I have to actually do the work to move the machine. And then with my long arm, my machine regulates the speed of my needle. And while I have my stitch re regulator on um, for this, you know, my domestic machine, my B, my Bernina B740, I'm using a foot pedal to regulate my speed. So it's just taking a little bit of coordination. It's something I haven't done in a hot minute, which is totally okay, but... We're gonna just get started here and bear with me if it's a little patchy to begin with, but I think once we get going, we should be okay.
I'm going back to top stitch 90. For some reason, this embroidery needle seems to be shredding my thread. So let's try a 90. I do have a top stitch 80, but I just, I think we need a bigger hole. The eye of the needle, okay. lower thread, and let's try that again. Oh, some days the sewing machine just, Settings aren't quite right, but that's okay. We're just going to keep going and until, until we get it right and everything is secured down. Ooh, okay, so far so good. So far so good, I think. Bring my tension down just a little bit. doesn't want to go backwards today. I, I have absolutely no idea why it doesn't want to go backwards, but it just doesn't. Okay. That's fine. We'll go with the direction it wants to go. So thread seems to be shredding above the needle, like somewhere in the, somewhere where it's th like threaded through the tension discs. I just don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a rayon. Sometimes rayons are like that. I don't know. That's okay. We'll just do our best. I've re-threaded it a number of times. It's gonna be okay. Okay, y'all, that was a battle. My machine, oh, hello, Ellie. My machine was putting up a fight to sew this today, and I'm guessing it is due for maintenance. So I'm gonna have to check to see if it needs maintenance. Just this simple thread painting, I wasn't sure we were gonna get through it. That took entirely too long, given how easy this should have been. I have new oil, it was a brand new needle. I actually had multiple needles, so I'm not sure why my thread was just shredding and breaking and not going through my machine and just skip stitches. This should have been a pretty simple one. Our, our testing piece seemed okay, although it was giving some trouble at the beginning and this really should have been a no brainer. So anyway, long story, long story, we have our stitching. I think it looks really pretty. I couldn't make it all the way through to the bottom because it was just catching in my machine and I was tired of fighting my machine. So we'll finish pinning these down once I have it attached to a bigger, to the background, so that there's a little bit more, I don't know, space for it to catch onto. Um, but yeah, so at least we have this one mushroom done. I am going to attempt to get through the blue mushroom. I am not going to even try to do the flowers today because my machine is having trouble changing directions. And when you're free motion quilting, that's really important. So I would like to get through the blue mushroom, tacking it down today very carefully. I, I don't think I'm gonna have the energy for the backgrounds, but I might try with just not even free motioning it, just a simple like quarter inch foot and like just soft, gentle curves through the background and see if my machine will handle that okay until I can get it in. Um, but if I even attempt to do flower dots on this mushroom, I think it's gonna be a no-go. However, I can probably do them on my long arm. It's just not gonna happen today. And I am just so tired that like, you don't wanna work on projects when you're tired. You wanna work on projects when you're feeling good and refreshed. So, so the other thing, the other symptom that I'm seeing with my machine that I didn't mention is that it keeps changing settings on me without me actually touching or changing them. And sometimes it'll change them like midway through me working. And so my mom has a very similar machine. It might be like 
one series off. Like, you know, I have a 740. She might have like a 760 or 780 or something. I don't know the numbers. Um, and I borrowed her machine one day to do some work uh, when I was at her house. And it was having similar symptoms where it would just suddenly change like stitch types or like suddenly would change just some major setting. This one happens to be changing my feed dogs. Suddenly it won't detect my feed dogs, even though they're totally fine. And then it'll reset and then unset even though I've shifted and changed nothing. So last time that that occurred on her machine, which is some very, very, like very close to this machine, it needed maintenance or like an update or something. So I don't know how to check that, but my mom will, because my mom is awesome. Um, so I'm going to ask her what she did for her machine. Right now, she she is unavailable for me to ask her, but when I have a minute and she is available, I'm going to ask her. So that's the other symptom that is making me think that it's not just me not having the right needle or the right thread or the right tension. It like the machine is actually doing things that it's not supposed to be doing. So I'm going to try to get through this mushroom. Please cross your fingers for me because it's been a long week and I just want to sew. <laughs> So with you all. So fingers crossed we'll get through this mushroom. And then I think we're going to just take a break for this week, at least on this project. I will definitely keep you posted. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start stitching now. Honestly, I'm not sure if we're going to get through this project tonight. This machine is giving me so much trouble, but I, I got through it. I got through at least thread painting this mushroom here. And I really like how this one came out. We got through thread painting this mushroom here. So I want to take just a couple minutes to talk through some of the issues that we were having while we were stitching these mushrooms. I know it can be super frustrating when you have skip stitches, thread breaks, phrase, all kinds of different tension issues. And there are a number of causes that can be the reason why we're getting so many issues. The first thing I want to tell you is this happens to everyone. Some days your machine is just not going to cooperate. It is going to give you trouble. You might be working on a project that is a little bit different from the ones that you generally work on. In this case, I have worked on these projects before. The only difference is I don't usually cut them out. Usually I keep them attached to a bigger piece of fabric. So maybe that would have given me a little bit more stability. Uh, but I have been quilting for over 25 years. No, no joke. Over 25 years, I started quilting. I had my first show in an adult competition by the time I was nine years old. And it happens. So I just wanted to give a, a few, <laughs> it's hard not to try to diagnose as I'm going. And I know that that's not like a super fun YouTube video, but here's the gist. Here's why I think that my machine might need maintenance. And no, I didn't just come to that conclusion. There are a couple other things that I can try. Probably not going to try them on this video because that's not fun. You don't want to see me trying to diagnose why my machine is skipping stitches and my thread is breaking. But here's how I got to that conclusion. Uh, first things first, I've done this project before. I have, not with mushrooms, but with flowers. I have thread painted before many times. I don't generally have an issue. So it's unusual for my machine to give me this much trouble. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that every machine is different. So this machine that I'm using here in this video is a computerized machine. I do find that computerized machines have a little bit more trouble going through thick surfaces. And because we're using a fusible web, this is a thicker material. However, I have gone through even things. I will attach this to another piece of fabric with batting and a backing, and this machine has handled it just fine. Granted, there was one point when I was sewing this up that I almost went to get my mechanical machine because my mechanical Bernina, which isn't super computerized, will go through anything. That thing will go through four layers of denim. So I know that machine can handle. And generally I use a top stitch needle, either an 80 or a 90 top stitch needle, and it can handle the weight. Now, when I was going through and seeing that I had skip stitches and tension issues, one of the first things you wanna check is A, re-thread your machine. 
I re-threaded it about 25, 30 times because my thread kept breaking. So I don't think it was a threading issue. Hi, Miss Ellie. Thank you. Thank you for the ball. We're going to take a little break though from the ball, okay? So I don't think that... So I re-threaded my machine about 25, 30 times. Not exaggerated. That was actually that many thread breaks as I was working on these mushrooms. So I know it was going through all the tension discs properly. Now, maybe one of the tension discs is broken. Possible. Could be a reason why we need maintenance. Um, but the other thing that is really important to check when you're having tension problems is your needle. You could have a dull needle, an old needle, just a bad needle, a bent needle. Uh, you could have a fray or a, like a little burr in your needle. I've changed my needle multiple times. I even tried different types of needles. I tried embroidery needles. I did a top stitch 90. There were two needles I didn't try because I don't have them in stock. I need to restock. So that's something that I can try before I bring this machine to my mechanic. Uh, I could try a titanium needle. Those are a little bit stronger. I could try a titanium needle. And I did not try a jeans 100 needle. That's sometimes my go-to, but it seems like overkill. I've done this with top stitch needles, so I don't know why I would need it, but maybe with the number of layers that I have, you know, built up here, it's possible. So those are two options. I need to restock them. That is possible. The other thing that is leading me to believe that this is not a tension needle thread issue is I use this thread all the time. In fact, I've used it recently, so I know it's not past its prime. Sometimes it could be a thread issue. My machine was giving me symptoms that kind of put the light bulb on my head. We might have a software update and or we might need some routine maintenance. First of all, this machine has not been in for maintenance in a long time. So there's a good chance that it might be due. So I need to check in with my dealer to see when it's due. So this is a good time that if you have not gotten your machine, just routine maintenance done in a while, contact either your dealer who sold you the machine to see if it's due for maintenance. This can help just keep your machine running smoothly so that your projects run smooth. But one, one key symptom that is telling me that maybe something is off is my buttons were just like my, my settings were just intermittently changing mid sewing. So it was no longer detecting that my uh, feed dogs were down and suddenly, I, but it, they were fully down. The button was fully compressed. Uh, it was suddenly not detecting that my stitch regulator was in and I would wiggle the wire and suddenly it would be okay. So something might be loose. Something might be a little iffy. Uh, I know my mom, she has a very similar machine to this, was having issues where the stitches would just intermittently change from a straight stitch to a completely different stitch, like as she was sewing. And so similar, like just sudden change in dynamics and buttons. And I think it needed to go in for maintenance. So in my world, I I'm thinking that might be the direction I need to go. And the only other thing I can think of is there were more skipped stitches when I was pushing the fabric away from me, toward me, when I was going backwards. So when I was pulling it toward me, and there's a chance I was pulling like too fast, but I was really moderating my speed. So I don't think that was it. This is something I do all the time. But there's a chance that the needle was getting caught in the fusible web and the fabric. So again, maybe a titanium needle, maybe a jeans needle, maybe my brute force mechanical machine would have done it. Either way, I'm probably going to finish this project up either on my mechanical machine or my long arm, at least until I get this one looked out, because honestly, it probably is due for some routine maintenance. Granted, this is a good time and a good reminder that if you are not routinely doing a tiny bit of maintenance yourself on your machine, you probably should be. So make sure that you are cleaning your machine regularly. I clean mine and delint it before every single, like when I sit down, the first thing I do is I open up under, you know, where the bobbin case goes and I make sure I clean it out with a little brush or a little Q-tip. I get any lint and dust out of there. I pull up the needle plate. I make sure that all of my lint and dust is out of there. I also oil my machine, not just when I'm starting a project, but if you sew often enough, you can hear when your machine needs another drop of oil and I found that I have mostly Bernina. My mechanical machine's a Bernina. This computerized machine's a Bernina. And my long arm machine is a Bernina. They like oil. They like oil. Um, granted, I am not a mechanic, so don't quote me. Look in your operating manual. It will tell you how much and when to oil your machine. But like my long arm machine, I usually oil it every couple of hours because it is doing a lot of stitches in a short period of time. 
this Bernina that I was working on yesterday, I oiled it. I got it ready to go even before I started stitching. So make sure that you're doing the routine maintenance and check in periodically because there's a chance it will need a bigger checkup from your local mechanic or your local dealer. So that is the current update. I am no stranger to tension issues. It happens. It happens to everyone. It is frustrating when this happens. It's a good time to go take a tea break, have a cup of tea, come back later when it's less frustrating, and then try to diagnose the problem further if you have the energy. And it's okay to walk away and step away for a day and then come back. But this is just, you are not alone. Again, I've been doing this for over 25 years. Experienced sewers, we have tension issues too. We have skip stitches. These are things that we have to work through. So my main advice is to go through and you know, test all possibilities. Again, next time I could try to keep this attached to a bigger piece of fabric. Maybe that would have given me a little bit more leverage. I could tell that my needle was getting a little gummy. So maybe a stronger needle, titanium or a jeans needle or denim needle. It's possible. Again, top stitch usually flies. Top stitch 90 is usually my go-to. For some reason, it wasn't holding up today. But notice your other signs. Is your machine acting unusual? And mine is. Mine is uh, intermittently changing settings on me without me telling it to. It is not detecting certain features. I think it might be time for either a software update or to run to my mechanics. So I just wanted to give you a little update now that I've taken a break and I am no longer really frustrated with my machine. And to tell you that you're not alone and that it's going to be okay and that we will be able to stitch another day. We've just got to work through it a little bit. So uh, thanks again for following along and for tuning in. I am so glad that you're here and bearing with me uh, for these issues. If you've ever run into these types of problems, by all means, commiserate, share in the comments below. Uh, I am here for it. I will be sending you some love. <laughs> So uh, be sure to hit that like button if this video was helpful for you or if you just enjoyed hanging out with me and hit that subscribe button. And I cannot wait to see you for some future stitching next time.